Hello there, my fellow intervening battle brothers, and welcome back to your weekly dose of the Siege of Vrax. For today, arriving at part 23 from our coverage. Last time, I left you with a bit of a cliffhanger as Marshal Kagori finally decided to request some Astartes assistance. And this assistance came in the form of the Red Scorpions chapter. Today, we shall talk about their first involvement in the campaign by attempting, once again, to seize the damn bridge. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The so-called Operation Execution Place would take a lot of careful planning, and involve all the resources that Commander Inea of the Red Scorpions had at their disposal including their very vessel, the Arx Fidelis. It would be a lightning assault, conducted in darkness and requiring superb timing. The spearhead of the attack was the first company squads, veteran battle brothers in Terminator plate. Commander Inea and Codicier Yaek would lead them personally, utilizing the teleport chamber on the vessel to deliver their mighty assault force into the bridge. This attack would need to be incredibly accurate, as it involved getting the teleporter as close to the target as possible and having a teleport beacon in place. Nothing could be left to chance. The mission of placing this teleport homer at a bridge would require a small volunteer team to drop in via Thunderhawk, just seconds before the Terminators were in position. This volunteer team would use a jump axe to land and then set up the beacon so the sensors of the Arx Fidelis could lock onto it. The Terminators would then teleport in and begin the proper attack. Meanwhile, as this spearhead was engaging, a second ground attack team would be ready to race to the Terminator's position using specialist siege equipment such as Vindicators. As the Terminators would seize the breach, so the ground forces would arrive to hold it against the inevitable counterattack. When the Space Marines had secured the bridge, they would signal that the mission was complete, and a special battle group from the 11th Assault Corps, picked specifically for this job, would be the first through the bridge to begin the exploitation. This would also include support from the Titans of the Legio Astorum. If all went well, the Red Scorpions could then hand over the security of the bridge to the Kriegan forces and then withdraw back to their vessel. The heretics were about to face something terrible. A true army of the Imperium in full combined arms warfare. Aboard the Arx Fidelis, the Battle Brothers were making ready for battle. The chaplains were blessing weapons and armor. Commander Rhinea himself spent a day in prayer before donning his own Terminator suit, along with Codicier Yaek and the veteran brothers of the First Company. He had already handpicked five volunteers for the mission of placing the beacon, all of them assault brothers of the Eighth Company, led by a certain sergeant called Kuln. The ground forces were also preparing to deploy via Thunderhawks to the surface. This unit was placed under the command of veteran sergeant Zir of the Sixth Company, assisted by three dreadnoughts. Zero hour was approaching as the Arx Fidelis came under fire. Blasts from defense lasers on the surface streaked skyward as the strike cruiser blasted into low orbit, the bombardment cannons returning fire as she was approaching. Several defense laser blasts smashed into the vessel's armor as the void shields failed under repeated impacts. Deep in the bowels of the strike cruiser, Ancient energies, barely contained by archaic machinery, were thrumming with power. Within the teleport chamber, lightning flashed and arced unpredictably as the tech priests scurried to and fro, adjusting dials and muttering incantations to appease the machine spirit. In the center was Commander Inea, the power sword of his rank in left hand, Stormbolder in the right. Behind him stood Codicier Yaek and ten men all of them equipped similarly, carrying tall thunder hammers and storm shields or the long blades of lightning claws. While the Arx Fidelis was buffeted and smashed by the defense lasers, a single Thunderhawk was racing low over the dark surface of Vrax, approaching the bridge from the south at no more than 30 meters above the ground, aka 100 feet. 
At the rear ramp stood five Space Marines, the assault squad of Sergeant Cullen. The sergeant was holding the beacon as the pilot warned them to stand by as the drop zone was approaching. In response, the jump pack turbines of the Space Marines wind into life, the ramp slowly descending to reveal the slate dark sky beyond. On command, the men of Calm jumped, plunging out into the darkness and the violent current of the Thunderhawk slipstream. With jump packs straining at full power to break the fall, the five assault marines aimed directly for the center of the bridge crater. In just a few seconds, they were down, smashing into the ground with an impact that would have killed any lesser man. The enemy, though, had been forewarned of the Thunderhawk's approach by the sound of its three great rocket engines. It passed directly overhead, flying flat out. Enemy sentries were alert now, and they started scouring the area. Flashlights and searchlights crisscrossed the bridge as Sergeant Cullen set up the beacon, his men around him covering every direction. And then, suddenly, the team was spotted. In the beginning, just a few shots pierced the darkness, whining overhead as Cullen hurried to direct the beacon signal back to the Arx Fidelis. The beacon bleeped into life as the sensors of the Arx Fidelis locked on. Sergeant Cullen immediately gave the order to open fire. Bolt pistols barked their distinctive sound as each bolt ignited before the sudden thunderclad explosion of its warhead on impact. The sentries on the crater's rim burst apart with the force of the explosions, torn limb from limb. The battle had begun. It was just five space marines before hundreds of foes. Undaunted, Cullen's squad ignited their jump packs again and launched themselves up the crater slope, straight at the enemy. Chainswords slashed and hacked, and bolt rounds roared in the night. Squad Cullen cut down the first sentries, but the alarm had already been raised. More traitors were rushing to man the defenses now. The trail of a missile streaked out of the darkness, smashing one battle brother clean in the chest, the blast of its crack warhead piercing the armor and severing the marine in half. Another space marine was wounded, his helmet punctured, leaving his face a bloody ruin of flesh and blood. Outnumbered and outgunned, even the space marines couldn't stand for long. Reinforcements had to come soon. The teleport chamber of the Arx Fidelis exploded with light as the blue lightning streaked across Aenea and his men. The air was alive, fizzing and sparking with power. As the blinding brightness faded to darkness, the chamber was left empty. The Terminators of Aenea appeared in a flash of light and a halo of sizzling power, directly on target. And now they would begin the slaughter. Aenea Stormbolter hammered a stream of bolts as the veterans advanced, the defenders fire useless against their Terminator armor and storm shields. Their thunder hammers and lightning claws cut a swave into the traitors. In darkness, all was confusion, but the Space Marines knew their plan and retained their discipline, working together to systematically clear the bridge. Power reefed Codicier Yayek's force weapon, lightning leaping from his fingers, smiting down anyone standing before him with the power of tamed warp at his command. Those enemies that didn't run away were destroyed utterly. As the Terminator brothers began their attack, so veteran sergeant Zir's strike force was racing across no man's land, deploying squads into battle lines to complete their advance on foot. Among their ranks stalked the lumbering dreadnoughts. The darkness didn't shroud their attack for long. Searchlight beams played across no man's land, locked onto the space marine vehicles, and the enemy firing began. Zir's battle brothers advanced into the fire, bolt guns returning shots in a steady, accurate stream. From behind the advancing squads, missiles and last cannons raced overhead, impacting against the parapets. Heavy bolters were blazing, rocket-powered shells shrieking as they tried to suppress the enemy's strongpoints. Pre-ranged artillery also began to land. Zir himself was flung into the air by a close impact, landing, unharmed, in a rain of rock and shrapnel. The veteran sergeant struggled to his feet and urged his brothers onwards. Their commander, Aenea, was ahead of them, 
fighting for the bridge itself, and they had to reach him. Somewhere in the darkness, a Vindicator's cannon opened fire, scoring a direct hit on the remains of a pillbox, which had been rebuilt with sandbags and boulders. The bunker exploded, its heavy weapon obliterated. Zir's tactical squad finally reached the edge of the crater. Under heavy fire, they paused and regrouped and reloaded, laying down a suppressive volley of bolt gun fire. The dreadnought Nalra was with them, his last cannon barrels glowing red hot. They were soon joined by brothers Raza and Derez, whose rock-cutting power drills were smashing the largest boulders to clear a route for the following vehicles. Before him came the first of the Vindicators. Another of its huge shells landed, looping a high trajectory onto the wall parapet above, its shattering detonation gouging into the rock and sending masonry crashing into the ground. Zir's main force had reached the mine crater. With the chaplain dreadnought Nalra at a fore, they now plunged down into the crater bottom where so many Kriegan guardsmen had fought and died before. Racing through the plunging fire and thickening artillery barrage, they climbed the far slope. Driven forward by their power armor, they never broke stride as they raced to join their commander's side. Just ahead of them, Commander Aenea's brothers met a countercharge of the Ogrens. The power sword of the commander was slicing left and right, severing the leg of one of them, which stumbled and fell, still swinging wildly with its club. The attack of the Ogrens was quickly cut to shreds. They were no longer facing just Imperial Guardsmen. The Thunder Hammers sent the creatures reeling, their drug-induced nervous systems overloaded by the weapon's impacts. Lightning Claws would slash and thrust, raking through crude plasteel armor like paper to dice the Ogrens in gory chunks of meat. Alongside Aenea was the sole survivor of Kuln's assault squad. The sergeant himself, wielding the chainsword in both hands, his bolt pistol discarded, empty of ammo. For his heroic effort in the breach that bloody night, Sergeant Kaln would later be elevated to the chapter's first company. Finally, Zir and Chaplain Nalra rendezvoused with their commander. Both were battle scarred, their armor dented and scorched, but the Red Scorpions had captured the breach. Enemy bodies lay scattered across the ground adding to the moldering bones of the long dead. The lightning attack of the Red Scorpions had succeeded where a year's worth of Kriegan attacks had failed. The enemy had been unable to stop the Terminator's sudden teleport assault, the fury of their attack, or the psychic might of Codicier Yayek. Commander Aenea formed his newly arriving reinforcements into a defensive perimeter then. They had taken the breach, and the mission complete signal was being transmitted. Now they had to hold it, at least until the Kriegans and the Titans of Drauka arrived. Aenea and his battle brothers were aware that the battle was not done yet. But the final engagement for the breach is gonna be a story for the next time. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Siege of Rax and Operation Execution Place for today. As you probably expected, there were no assets the enemy possessed outside of Chaos Space Marines which could fight off a Terminator assault. And so, the Red Scorpions did their part. What are your thoughts on their involvement so far? Do you think the Kriegans should have waited for Space Marines instead of wasting a year against the bridge? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end and I wish you all a great and healthy day. The Emperor Protects.